Hello everybody, in this video we'll talk about multiple sclerosis medications. First, I will talk about the pathophysiology of multiple sclerosis. MS is a progressive chronic autoimmune disease. Here we have the neuron, and it is protected by the myelin sheath. In MS, T cells will recognize myelin as a foreign, and will attack it causing a demyelination of the neuron. Now, the signals that should have been transmitted to the area that the nerve supply will not be transmitted properly. Let's go back to the T-cells. T-cell action will start the inflammatory process. It will allow more T-cells to come in from the blood-brain barrier. And cytokines like interleukin-1, interleukin-2, and TNF will be released. These cytokines will dilate the blood vessels in the blood-brain barriers and attract B cells and macrophages as part of the inflammatory process. Now for the symptoms, since it affects transmission of signals, we would expect coordination issues, sensory problems, and cognitive issues. We have four types of multiple sclerosis. First, the relapsing remitting, which is the most common type, where the patient will have relapse phases followed by remission phases. Then we have secondary progressive, which is the same as the first one, but in a progressive manner. Then we have primary progressive, which is always progressive, and then we have a progressive relapsing. It's a progressive, but with a relapsing phase. Now let's talk about the treatment options. We have disease-modifying agents and symptomatic medications. First, disease-modifying agents are indicated to decrease relapse rates or in some cases prevent disability. The major targets of these medications is to modify the immune response through the inhibition of white blood cells mediated inflammatory process that eventually lead to myelin sheet damage. First medications we have are the interferon beta-1a and beta-1b. They suppress production of the pro-inflammatory cytokines and reduce the inflammatory cell migration of the T-cells across the blood-brain barrier. Adverse effects include depression, local injection site reaction, increased hepatic enzymes, and flu-like symptoms. Second, we have glutaramer, which is a synthetic polypeptide that resembles myelin protein and may act as a trap for T-cell attacks. Side effects include injection site reaction that happens with more than 90%, and other systematic reactions like chest tightness, flushing, and dyspnea. Third, we have fingolimide, which is an oral drug that alters lymphocyte migration by inhibiting the S1P receptor, resulting in fewer lymphocytes in the CNS. Fingolimide may cause first dose bradycardia and is associated with increased risk of infection and macular edema. Fourth, we have terifulnomide which is an oral pyrimidine synthesis inhibitor that leads to a lower concentration of active lymphocytes in the CNS. Side effects include elevated liver enzymes, and it is pregnancy category X. The fifth agent is the dimethyl fumarate. It promotes anti-inflammatory and cytoprotective activity. It is an oral agent that alters cellular response to oxidative stress to reduce disease progression. Flushing and abdominal pain are the most common adverse effects. Six, we have natalzumab. Zumab's effects remind us of the monoclonal antibodies. So yes, it's the first monoclonal antibody developed specifically for treatment of multiple sclerosis. It is for patients who have failed first-line therapies. The mechanism of action is it inhibits migration of T-cells across blood-brain barrier. Other effects include headache, UTI, respiratory tract infection, depression, abdominal pain, but well, the most serious side effects of them all is the PML or the progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, which is a disease that causes demyelination similar to the MS. Seventh agents we have are the mitoxantron, which is a cytotoxic anthracycline analog that kills T cells and may also be used for multiple sclerosis. Adverse effects will logically include leukopenia, since it decreases T cells, and cardiotoxicity since anthracycline is known to cause cardiotoxicity. Also, it causes alopecia and UTI. Now, we have another monoclonal antibodies, like almituzumab, daclizumab, and ocrizumab. Almituzumab will act on the CD52, which is highly expressed in the lymphocytes T and B cells, resulting in decreased levels of these cells. Side effects will, of course, include infections, like UTI, URI, herpes viral infections. 
or daclizumab, the mucosal function is, it modulates interleukin-2 mediated activation of lymphocytes through binding to CD25. Side effects include rash, high ILT, and pharyngitis. For ocrelizumab, it binds to CD20, which is a cell surface antigen present on the pre, B, and mature B lymphocytes, resulting in antibody-dependent cellular cytolysis. Side effects will include upper respiratory tract infection, depression, and back pain. Okay, now we finished from the disease-modifying agents and we'll go to the symptomatic treatments. First, for spasticity, we can use muscle relaxants like baclofen or tizanidine. For baclofen, it can cause somnolence and confusion that improve with time. For tizanidine, it can cause extreme sedation. For bladder dysfunction, like having the symptoms of urgency and frequency, we can use one of these anticholinergics or one of these antimuscarinics, and side effects can be dry mouth or constipation. For bowel function, like having the symptoms of constipation or diarrhea, for diarrhea we can use high fiber diet, and for constipation we can use laxatives and soft softeners. For neurogenic pain, like having the symptoms of numbness and tingling, the medication can be gabapentin and pregabalin. For tremors, we can use beta blockers like probranolol or pinzodiazepines like clonazepam. For cognitive dysfunction, like having reduced attention, reduced short term memory, or reduced verbal fluency, we can use donapazol, which is a acetylcholine steroid inhibitor that are used with Alzheimer's disease patients. Last, for depression, we can use one of the SSRIs or TCA. And that's the end of this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, share, and like.